here's an update of my collection video. This time around, I'm going to be introducing new characters that some of you might not know. So for most of the main characters, I'm going to give you guys a short description, just so you know who they are. So first, of course, we have Red. He's the leader of the Angry Birds, and he used to take his responsibilities very seriously. He wants every bird to be just as serious as him, but after Ruby's unfortunate passing, he loosens up a bit, and he treasures the time he spends with his friends while they're still around. Next we have Chuck. He's a Canary Karate master and he's very fast. Because of his skills, he's an arrogant douchebag. But he's secretly insecure. About Terrence especially. The Blues love pulling pranks. They're considered one bird because they're barely separated. Jay is the oldest, who comes up with the pranks. Jake is intelligent but is forgotten about because he's the middle child. And Jim is the derpy but wholesome youngest sibling. Next we have Bomb. He's a really cool and hip dude. That's because when he gets too mad, he explodes. Because he's a crow, Bomb loves human culture, like music and the way they speak, which is why Bomb speaks the way he does. And here's Matilda, the mother to the eggs. Matilda is a motherly hippie who's very obsessed with nature and the balance of the universe like every hippie is. Here is Hal. Hal loves going out into the world and explore what is there, and he learns about whatever he discovers using the many fields of science that he learned, making him the brains of the Angry Birds. Terrence. The pigs are the reason why he lost his family, including his little brother Red. But Terrence is still a valuable asset. But Terrence is still a valuable asset to the Angry Birds because of his huge size and his strength. Terrence also likes to compete against Chuck, because he always wins. All right, next we have Bubbles. Bubbles loves candy and Halloween because he gets a lot of candy. He's very cute and wholesome, but sometimes he gets sugar rushes, which makes him hyperactive and reckless. But he's still our wholesome bubble boy. He's linked to a lot of Wild West merchandise, like the Western Roundup game. His Connects version fought this guy. And in Angry Birds 2, he says yeehaw a lot. Yeehaw! And here's Bubbles' puffed up form. Puffed up bubbles, made by the same 5 bitch bubble plush that I have. And next we have Stella. Even though she's around the same age as Red, Chuck, and Bomb, she used to have the typical rebellious teenager face. She hated authorities like Red. But once she got the chance to lead the Angry Birds, she learns to respect Red. She was getting really old, so I decided to finally update Stella. Speaking of updating models, here is Silver. Last time she was made of paper. Now she's made out of clay. Silver was raised by the pigs. Mainly her dad, Professor Pig. But the pigs still treat Silver poorly because she's a bird. Despite that, Silver got their sense of humor, and now she is a dank memer. Next, we have the newest playable bird in Angry Birds 2, Melody. Hello? Melly! Copyright! Melody is a celebrity singer, so she loves to sing, in particular songs that would get me copyrighted. She's still trying to get used to the Angry Birds, who always sleep out in the open, and not in a comfy bed or in a hotel room like the other celebrities. Because she's a celebrity, Melody sometimes lets her fame get to her head. Here is Joe. Joe loves to dance, in particular Fortnite emotes and the distraction dance from Henry Stickman. Watch Joe break dance. Ooh, get old Melody! The head feathers resemble the colors of the non-binary flag. Next we have Isaac. Isaac is an alien from outer space, so he has to learn the ways of Earth. In doing so, he's very paranoid, so anything he doesn't understand, he thinks is a sign of an alien invasion. And you can hear him yell, ALIENS! This must be an alien invasion! Or, THE END IS NEAR! It's kind of weird seeing Isaac without his eye patch because of what happened at the end of Season 4. And next we have Isaac's best friend, Ollie, the hockey bird. And Ollie loves hockey, so he's very competitive when he plays. And he learned the Canadian accent. And he feels like he's responsible for Isaac, so now he does whatever it takes to help Isaac heal. And he's able to carry his hockey stick behind him, which he calls Jessica. Dropping in next is Terence's cousin from Finland, Tony. Tony is Terence's Nordic cousin who lives in Helsinki, Finland. He loves doing snow activities like ice fishing, sledding, watching the Aurora Borealis, and spending time with Terence and his little brother Ollie. I tried to get him to match the Connect Terence as much as I could. So a while back, I did say that I'd make tutorials of Ollie and Tony, but, but when I mentioned that they're made out of paper mache, everybody decided, oh, they're too hard to make. Am I missing anyone? Oh, hang on, I forgot their eggs! They hatched now! So here is Zoe, the Zoe from the second Angry Birds movie. She wants to be her parents' favorite child, so she likes to be responsible and order her siblings about. This is Samantha, Sammy, Sam Sam, I don't freaking care what you call her. She's very adorable. She loves all the things in nature, even worms. 
and because she's so innocent, she always sees the good in people, just like her mother. And lastly, the main man himself, Chip. Like any little boy, Chip is very hyper, and loves getting in trouble. Even if it means he gets hurt, Chip wants to be just as cool as his dad, Bob. And since I'm covering the main birds, I might as well include... Stella's friends. First, let's start with Poppy. Poppy loves playing the drums and being loud, which annoys the heck out of her friends. But she tries her best to help out the fight against the pigs by using her several loud noises. And here's Luca, the baby of the group. He's a literal baby. I think he's the smallest paper figure ever made. And here's Willow. I changed her appearance a bit. Willow's my favorite Stella character. She's very shy and artistic. And she wears her hat to cover her colorful feathers. And here's Dahlia. She's a scientist, but with science, she always tries to make sense of the wacky things that she's seen. And she goes berserk when things don't make sense. She especially hates it when Poppy disrupts her experiments, just like in the Angry Birds Stella show. Here's Red's flock, and Stella's flock. Oh, they're, they're barely able to fit. Now on to the pigs. Excuse me! <laughs> Just Wait a bit, am I missing anyone? Ah, there she is. This is my ruby figure. See the bow on her head? She makes sure every day that it's not crooked. She has OCD, and she wants things to be perfect, which is why she and Red are so perfect for each other. And she loves seeing things that have bows. The reason why she appeared out of nowhere is because in my series, she's a ghost now. Okay, now join the others. So first, we have King Pig, the Activity King Pig. King Pig Smooth Cheeks was a snotty, childish, pompous, fat idiot who wants nothing more than to eat the eggs. But after the Angry Birds and Bad Piggies have a peace treaty, he's now a snotty, childish, pompous, fat idiot who wants to be a better king. Here's Foreman Pig, one of the many I have. Again, Foreman Pig loves building stuff, and it's nostalgic for the old days of the world. But his builds are terrible, so the Angry Birds keep breaking them down. Here is Corporal Pig. Drop me and you will drop and give me 20! Do you hear me, Mugget? Here is Chef Pig. Wait, where is he? <laughs> Chef Pig! Can you stop backstabbing everyone every five seconds? I brought you out of the multiverse for this! Anyway, here's Chef Pig. Jeez. Banish the guy in the multiverse in another. What do you get? Backstabbing Frenchman. Next, I'll introduce Ross. Just like in Bad Piggies 2, Ross is very silly and clumsy because he keeps destroying every cart he rides. I had to sacrifice one of my mini pigs to make Ross and another to make Mechanic Pig. Mechanic Pig is very proud of his builds and the gadgets he makes for Ross. So whenever Ross destroys his things, he beats the ever-living crap out of him. But Ross is the only one brave enough to try Mechanic Pig's contraptions, which makes them very good friends. Uh, these two mini pigs in particular, these two are Samson and Gregory. They are King Pig's personal bodyguards. You can even see them in Angry Birds tunes, I like to think. They're just regular old minion pigs, but they're King Pig's bodyguards. Next we have Piggy McCool. Like his costume suggests, Piggy McCool is a huge fan of the Angry Birds. So much so that he writes fan fiction of them, which creeps the Angry Birds out. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is so juicy! <laughs> here's Professor Pig, and here's Chronicle Pig. Unlike most of the pigs, Professor Pig is very clean and pacifist. Pigs dump silver on Professor Pig just because of how different he is, which is how Professor Pig got custody of silver. For some reason, these two geezer pigs always like to crack, for no apparent reason at all. And now I finally got them to not crack anymore. And next I have Dr. Pig, made from another spare foreman pig that I have. Dr. Pig performs these crazy experiments that even the pigs want to be no part of. One of them is the Frankenbird, which you'll see later. Which is why he was banished to a secluded island in Angry Birds fight. Here is Prince Porky. Now, I've been playing Angry Birds Project R, the fan game. The game's really cool because they make their own music. Go check it out. I like the game so much that I made two more of its main pigs. The game had Hat Kid in the game. Hat Kid. The pig version I like to call Hat Piglet. For the references, I used both Hat Kid from Hat in Time and what this big looks like in Project R. I even gave Hat Piglet her iconic smirk face. And then here's Handsome Pig, an updated version of the one that I have. So this part of the wig is made of clay, and these two parts are made of paper. What I was supposed to show in the last Q&A is that my model of Handsome Pig has a, come on, not the sign, has a removable wig. Ah! 
My hair! My beautiful hair! Now that we're in the topic of villains, I might as well put Gale here. She's not a pig, obviously, but she's the villain. Next, let's take a look at these three titans right here. This is Goliath Pig from Angry Birds Toons. He has a very unique shape. He has a very big head and a very tiny, thick abdomen. And this guy is actually really heavy because inside Goliath Pig is a wooden block to help him stand easier. Next, we have the Brute from Angry Birds Epic. I'm really proud of how he turned out. I think I made this guy too big, but I don't care. Yes, that is a big skull on his back. El Porcador, the opera singing luchador. He's an updated version of the one that I had, and what's special about this El Porcador is that his costume can be removable. And underneath, you can see... Any minute now. Three days later. Underneath, you can see Big Bork from Angry Birds Space. It's not exactly Big Bork's sprite in Angry Birds Space, but because he's inspired by Big Bork, I might as well make two in one. Ah! Next, we have the Guard Pig from Angry Birds Epic. Next, here's King Mudbeard. The very same King Mudbeard prop from Angry Birds Under Construction. The Ghost of King Mudbeard. And he did appear once in the Christmas special in Season 5. In the future, I'm gonna make an updated King Mudbeard, but I will keep this figure as the ghost of King Mudbeard, judging his son for ending the war between the birds and the pigs. And next, here's a special figure. This is my figure of Technoblade in Angry Birds style. I made this guy after finding out his unfortunate passing and the news behind it. This figure I made in honor of his memory. He's actually the first Minecrafter who introduced me to the Dream SMP. His humor, his cyberbullying everybody, and not to mention his tremendous achievements definitely screamed Technoblade never dies. And next we have Earl, the cowboy pig, who is my only Kinex pig I have. Yeehaw! And now to show the rest of my pigs. For the second wave, I'll start with Hambo, the pig who killed Ruby. Next we have one of the wizard pigs from Angry Birds Epic. I wanted to make this guy recently because I thought his design was really cool and I was looking for new main pigs. So his hat, his robe, his mustache are all made of paper. And yes, it is another foreman pig that I used. Next I have the female pig from this one poster. And she can also double as the female pig from Hogs and Kisses. Her bow is yellow and pink at the same time. So I can switch in between the two colors. Hey, no fair! I want a color-changing bow! Next we have Hector Poco from Angry Birds Space. I think he debuted in, what's it called? Brass Hogs? Where the Angry Birds Space birds go through different levels of the past. And without his hat, he kind of looks like Dr. Robotnik from Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to end this, Sonic! And speak of Angry Birds Space, I have this little guy. He's a Kinex frozen menu pig. And now for my minion pigs. Hey! So in total, I have 14 Mattel minion pigs. Some of them I turned into characters. I've heard of people who had many more Mattel minion pigs than this, but it's alright. But regarding minion pigs as a whole, I have 15 counting this guy, 16 counting the Kinex minion pig, who was Earl, 17 if you count Piggy McCool, <laughs> 18 if you count the female pig, 19 with Hector Porco, 20 when you count this guy, I think he's the only flat faced minion pig I have left. The rest of them I made into customs. Like this guy. 21. Ah! 22 if you count Hat Piglet. And here are the several costumes that the minion pigs wear. Mattel and Kinex. Here are the construction hats from On the Ice. And here are the cowboy hats from Rustin Roundup. And here's Earl. For By golly gee, you are the rootinest tootinest cowboy pigs I ever did see. Uh, shucks, partner. Yeehaw! Here's the bunny pig from Spring of Sprung. Is it Easter yet? And here's his Easter egg, but I'm missing the bottom half. And I have three Santa hats. Two of them are from the Happy Holidays game with Hal, and the other is from that advent calendar. This Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer costume is also from that advent calendar. Here's my clay version of the pumpkin hat seen in the Angry Birds Mattel Halloween game with Terrence and Bubbles. And here's an ice cream hat from the summertime Angry Birds Mattel game with Stella. And lastly, here are my helmet pigs. This pig's helmet and Corporal Pig's helmet are from Mega Fling. 
And this is the helmet of a frozen helmet pig that I had lying around. You've done me proud, boys. Now, give me back my helmet before I make you go to war, maggots! All right, now that the pigs are done, I can show you my mighty characters. First, Mighty Eagle. Mighty Eagle prefers to be alone, but he likes telling stories about his youth. Recently, he is Red's mentor because he passed down his power to him, kind of like All Might to Deku. So, as the angry birds become less and less scared of him, Mighty Eagle tries to steer Red and the other birds in the right direction. He's probably one of the oldest props that I have that never changed. This is Mighty Dragon. That's right, Mighty Dragon's not just a head anymore. I finally got around to making his whole body. Unlike Mighty Eagle, Mighty Dragon's just like Asian parents. He's a very traditionalist, and he wants to be treated with respect. But he'll show you his good side once you give him a golden koi fish. And what's cool about this mighty dragon is he can he can move just like how he does in the game. He flies like this, so he dives down and he curves around like this. And I think he might have hit something by mistake, but you get the idea. So yeah, here's mighty eagle and mighty dragon. I'm really happy with how mighty dragon turned out. Don't get piercing, children. Asian households don't like it. Now I'll move on to the prototype block. First we have George, aka the very first red bird. As the very first red bird, George is a legend among the Angry Birds. I also call him the George Washington of the Angry Birds. Because similar to how George Washington stood up to the British colonizers, the British being a separate island wanting to conquer another island, George stood up to his King Pig at the time. Piggy Island wanted to conquer Bird Island. So George Washington and George the Red Bird are very similar. Next to the prototype Chuck, which I called Bucky. Bucky has a very short temper, just like in the cutscenes. And he's the only one tough enough to run a saloon. Next we have prototype Bomb. A lot of you guys call him Bomb Bomb. And personally, I don't like the name. The person who made the name is fine, but I just don't like the name. This guy and Bomb are two different characters. So having Bomb and Bomb Bomb in the same room is really weird to me. So I called this guy Pyro, like TF2 Pyro. So Pyro is not very fond of his old age. He's a very grouchy old man. Next we have prototype Hal, which I called Alejandro, based on the fact that Hal used to be called Al back in the day. Alejandro likes to sing Spanish songs and speak in Spanish for the most part. And next we have prototype Bubbles, or one of them, the main one, I call him Puffy. Puffy is very timid, just like his sprite. So whenever the hungry birds come to town, he always hides and cowers in fear. A person named Cars Ignite 95 first came up with the name Puffy for his Angry Birds series. I asked him if it was cool if I could use it, and he said, yeah, go ahead. And so, Puffy got his name. And with Puffy, you have Puffy's popped up form. Unfortunately, it's just a shirt taped into a circle. So eventually, it wants to become a shirt again, which is why it looks like this. Right now, that's what it looks like. Next, we have this bird. Many of us call him Earl. A lot of people said he's a prototype of someone. Like prototype bomb, my eagle, what have you. And here is his Frankenbird form. Earl is a bird made of many bird parts, and each of those bird parts are sentient. So he's as big as a buzzard, he has the pelican beak, and he's made of different kinds of birds, which is why he's called the Frankenbird. He was made by Dr. Pig, and now he ends up looking like this. And next, we have prototype Melody. Melody is supposed to be a pelican, much like this. I call this guy Crazy Dave. Yes, the Plants vs. Zombies Crazy Dave. In my series, I wanted Plants vs. Zombies and Angry Birds to cross over, and this guy looked very similar to Crazy Dave in that this bird has a beard like this. Just like in Plants vs. Zombies, Crazy Dave was able to make sentient plants that help him defend his lawn from zombies. He may or may not have terrible experiences with zombies, which is why he hates them so much. Next, nice, let's look at the effed up bits. First, we have Sarge, the very militaristic leader of the effed up bits. And here's Woodsy. He came up short, fortunately, against the bad, bad sheep. He's still part of the vids. Next, we have Toucan. I miscolored the guy. He's supposed to be pink, but I accidentally made him gray. He's supposed to be pink. That's totally my mistake. And here's a recolor Chuck. I mean Chuck recolor. I mean Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yes, Brooklyn. He's a green Chuck with blue eyebrows and hair, and his beak is different, I guess. And here is Frenchie. In the animation, he flew into a plane and destroyed the bad sheep forever. And he doesn't feel like being part of the bird pig war. 
yeah, here are the octopids. All five of them. Now let's give those confounded sheep one full. Well do, Sarge. Here's a weird category. Basically, these are the birds who don't fit into any category, but I'm going to show them anyway. First, we have this purple bird. A lot of you guys call this bird Bouncy, and you know what? So will I. But in my series, she is called Bouncy. Bouncy is an emo goth girl who hates the sun. And she loves everything that's black and dark. Black coffee, dark outfits, dark itself. And Bouncy is pretty much dead inside. I've been told recently that the person who created the name, Yoshi Fan, starts to dislike the fact that we've been calling this bird Bouncy. Just to let you guys know out there. And another popular OC, this is Shay, the brown bird. In the wiki, it says that he's one of the three eggs, so introducing him nowadays might get tricky. Sadly, I might have to change that part of his backstory. Also, how do you guys say his name? Shay? Chet? I just say Shay because it's short for Ricochet. And another OC, we have Alex Bird, the most legal of legal birds. He's a boy, his skin color is legal, his size is legal. His hobbies include talking about Bosnia a lot and nothing illegal. He loves Angry Birds in Minecraft, but he hates bad piggies. Very legal. Next, we have the Angry Birds version of Flappy Bird. He's not really an OC. I just want to make him an Angry Birds form because I thought he'd be cool. The next OC, we have my very old model of Spike or Blue J5678 Birdsona. This is the reason why Blue J5678 and I are friends in the first place. I don't really show this model off a lot, but this figure is still part of my collection nevertheless. And speaking of some of these birds, Sona, you have me. No, I'm kidding. This is Rusty. Rusty, much like me in real life, is a weeb degenerate. He watches his anime on pirated sites instead of paying for Crunchyroll. This comes from the fact that Rusty is a wanted criminal. But deep down, Rusty wants nothing more than to be part of the Angry Birds and to be acknowledged by them. Fun fact, in a fight between a hummingbird and a butterfly, the butterfly wins. So that Rusty has a fighting chance, he keeps the armor. Another OC, we have Zaya Star's OC. He's the only figure that I have of the contest winners that I have left. Sadly, I couldn't count Venom Stella or the former Birdsona of Shidki Akim, a cartoon he said because they are recolors of existing figures. But this one is its own figure, so I included him in the video. Next, we have Shakira Bird from Angry Birds Pop back in the day. Making the wig was really difficult because all these different strands, but yeah. And here's a funny one. Do you guys remember this guy? So in the comments, who is this guy? If you remember him. I genuinely want to see the responses. And last, here's a penguin. He's just a macaroni penguin. I tried to make him an Italian mobster because macaroni is spaghetti. Macaroni can be an Italian dish, so I wanted him to be an Italian mobster. Which is why he keeps saying sheesh, he? Eh? And here we have another group of birds. This time, these are the birds that appeared during Bomb and Matilda's wedding. First, we have the Blue's parents. Uh, there you go. Greg Blue and Olive Blue. They used to be overprotective of the Blues when they were under the Angry Birds care, but now the Angry Birds gained their trust. Next, we'll move on to Bomb's family. This is Phil. Based on Philza Minecraft's merchandise, here's Philza's hardcore heart. Here is his Urahara hat. The reason why he has wings is because at one point, Philza Minecraft cosplayed as a crow and he looks just like this. Next, we have Wilbur. Bomb's very chaotic and destructive stepbrother. He may or may not have blown up an entire nation once, and he may or may not like to eat sand. Next, we have Tommy. He likes to say Pog Champ a lot. He thinks he's all that. He thinks that he is a ladies' man. He thinks that he's the most alpha male out of all of them, but he is still but a little child. And if you guys have been catching up with Philza and Wilbur Soot, you may know that in the QSMP, they actually have eggs. Pretend these are Phil's and Wilbur's eggs for a second. Now they're actual Angry Birds protecting their eggs. Pretty cool. And this is Bomb's mom, or Bomb, made from the Bomb figure found in the old Knock on Wood game. Ah, uh, one sec, I gotta see my son really quick. And next we have Matilda's parents. Here's Matilda's mom. Her name is Chica. I like to nickname her Prototype Matilda because she is based on how Matilda looks like in that old Mighty Eagle poster back in the day. And where's Matilda's dad? 
This part of the video, I'm looking forward to making the most because I'm going to be introducing most of you guys to the Hungry Birds. For those of you who don't know, in my series, the Hungry Birds are evil Angry Birds who want to steal the Angry Birds' powers for their boss, the Empress, who is back there. Why do they want to steal the Angry Birds' powers? Reasons vary. They get a power of their own, to save their species, to save their homes, etc, etc. So first off, we have Cornelius the Peacock, arguably the most popular Hungry Bird. And can you blame him? He's got beautiful feathers, and I have a very funny Indian accent. So if you guys don't know, Cornelius is very proud of his feathers. He wants nothing more than everyone to look at his feathers and admire them. And his power is hypnosis. While he dances to Punjabi music, his feathers can hypnotize anyone who looks at them. Just like peacocks in real life. Next, we have his partner in crime, Rex, the Shoebill Stork. When you saw Rex for the first time, he was all blue, but actually, he's supposed to be gray and blue. So Rex is depicted as very silent, and he has that iconic machine gun sound, which is actually Morse code. That's how he's able to communicate with everybody. So just like real life, Rex is very creepy. And that's actually his power. Rex stares at people and fills them with dread paralyzing them. Because look at the guy. He has a very terrifying stare. Next we have Nugget. This is Matilda's father in the wedding. Yeah, he's a rooster. He's very proud of the fact that chickens are related to Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's not really true. He wants to save the chickens from being a laughing stock. And Nugget's power is that he can actually roar like a T-Rex. So instead of saying cock-a-doodle-doo, he goes cock a doodle doom to everybody. And next we have Meter Flyer. He was the main antagonist for Angry Birds Summer Madness, but now I made him the leader of the Hungry Birds. He wants to take vengeance on Red for being the leader of the Angry Birds instead of him, and his power is he has a laser. Yeah, just a big old laser. And next we have Polly, as in Polly wants a cracker. Crack? Polly wants a cracker? She is a parrot, or a red macaw, a very popular species of parrot. And just like parrots, her power is actually imitating voices. So she could come in handy when she's trying to trick the Angry Birds. Next we have Squeaks. Squeaks the rubber duck. He's a literally a rubber duck. His skin is rubber. And because of that, this allows Squeaks to take any shape or form. Kind of like Jake the dog. But his most popular use of this power is disguising himself as anybody. He can stretch his body to become anyone he wants. And next we have... I didn't introduce this guy yet, but... He is a Toko Toucan. There's what he looks like from the side. He's not Angry Birds Go How. This guy is somebody else. When will he be introduced? I have no idea. And last but not least, you've seen him around. This is the bootleg purple bird plush. I may not have the actual plush itself, but I tried to make it look like the plush as much as I could. And last but not least, we're the Hungry Birds without their boss. This is the Empress. Big bad of the Tale of Two Islands arc. The Empress is a force to be reckoned with. Orduha is very cold and terrifying because of what she had to go through in the Philippines. The humans keep destroying her habitat, which is why she keeps saying deforestation is the leading causes of the species becoming extinct, which is especially true for the Philippines. What makes her even scarier is that she has the ability to steal Angry Birds' powers and she gets the Hungry Birds to work by giving them the broken powers that she's captured. I think the Empress said once that she gave Cornelius his hypnosis. She's heavily inspired by All for One from My Hero Academia, as well as the father from Full Metal Alchemist. And one of those powers is making herself flat, so she's not seen the easiest. She's flat because I didn't get to finish her prop in time for her first appearance, but I will get to finishing her though, don't worry. And yeah, here are the Hungry Birds the main antagonists of Season 5. There will be more to come though, so these are not all the Hungry Birds that are going to be introduced, so stay tuned. Here are my Angry Birds movie Lego minifigs. Here are the birds, and here are the pigs, and how Bubbles are Terrans are made using Play-Doh. And guys, would you believe me that Lego also made a minifigure of the blues? There they are. I'm pleased to say that I found the stuff I was missing from the last collection video like Mighty Eagle's wings, Leonard's crown, and this guy's pirate hat. And to make sure this guy doesn't get lost again, I taped it to his head. Permanently. 
Hi, matey. I feel like I'd be having scurvy on my head. Do you mateys know why that is? One of my extra reds is currently mugging another extra red using a banana. I don't know what happened here, but I'd rather not be part of it. Here are all my Angry Birds Go Televods. Organized by the different tracks that are there. I'm pretty sure we've all done this at one point. Here are the Jenga carts. What's cool about these guys is that you could swap the drivers. And here are my Angry Birds Go pigs. So these pirate pigs are from the Pirate Pig Attack Jenga game. These guys are from the Pig Rock Raceway, I think they're called. This pig is from Multipack. Eyepatch's counterpart is currently having a great time right now. And here are all my Angry Birds Star Wars telepods. The bird side and the pork side. I still find it weird that Count Dooku is a pig, even though he was a Jedi first. And speaking of Angry Birds Star Wars, I have this shirt. I can't believe I didn't show you guys my plush collection. So I have a 5 inch ruby, a 5 inch Valentine's Day Matilda. I cut up the bow so it looks more like Matilda. I have female pig, so I have all of the hugs and kisses female characters. I also have the infamous 5 inch bubble plush, which I turned into Bubbles' inflated mode. And I also have this red tele pizza plush that I got from American Dream. I also got this guy from American Dream. I still can't believe that they still have Commonwealth plushes, even as a backpack clip. That's my entire Angry Birds plush collection. I don't collect as much as the other people because I prioritize Mattel and smaller figures. And just like any 8 inch plush, you could have this guy wear human headgear. It actually fits him. Sunglasses, maybe not. And now for a really, really weird group of Angry Birds, I have these. They are squeaky toys. How about listen? Sadly, Red and Bomb don't squeak anymore because their their squeakers are. Yeah. So I have a Red. He looks like this. There's paint on his eyes because they started to yellow, and I tried to use white out on the eyes. And here's Chuck. This is how I think you've seen how before in an episode. I think it's on His Majesty's Secret Service Part 2. Here's one of the blues. I couldn't get all three. For the very hardcore OG fans, this is from when Bubbles was put on a diet for eating too much candy. And here's Bomb. I think he appeared recently. I think he was a Christmas gift given to Piggy McCool. And he has the white spot. And here's Matilda, but she is the least detailed out of all of them. Like Mattel, her eyes aren't painted because she has white feathers. And she's also the most derpy out of all of them. <laughs> so if you're wondering why you haven't seen these before, it's because I got these guys while I was in the Philippines. These squeaky toys are actually almost 10 years old. And now for my extras. Here are my extra reds, including Super Red from Angry Bird Space. So, so, here is red, so here's the red I used for Season 1. So here's the red from Season 1 in Angry Birds on the Construction. Here's Season 2 red. Here's Season 3 to mid-Season 5 red. And here's the red that I use now. I have a confession to make about these two reds. For a long time I said that this is my Season 3 red, but sadly I couldn't get this red spot to darken. I, had to I have to replace my longest running red. But this guy's an awesome replacement. And here's Ruby. Technically, she's an extra red. I miss you, Ruby. I miss you too, Red. Here are my extra chucks. These three are from the old Mattel games. This one I tried to turn into Brooklyn, which is why he has green paint. Here is the infamous bald chuck. And a spare Masham chuck. Here is the infamous blue kebab. And now... I have baby blues. Here's an old Mattel bomb that I turned into mom. Shoo wee! You smell like you haven't bathed in days! Here, let me wash behind those ears. They would stop. I'm an adult, mom! Here are my extra Terrences. The old Mattel Terrence. I think he's rare now. And the unfinished Terrence, which I turned into wingman. Here are all my bubbles. Bubbles says. So this is season one bubbles. The connects bubbles. 
the, connect, the Kinex bubbles that Bubbles turned into after his diet, the Atomic Bubbles from Angry Birds Space, I'm not sure if I showed you guys this yet, and my Mashem Bubbles, the reason why I lock my door every night. You're not you when you're hungry. Have a Klondike ball. Here all my Stellas. Here's my very first Stella. She's not in the best shape right now. Here is the legendary Stella mod that I made for Season 2. Huge respect to that Stella right there. Whoa! And finally, my Mashem Stella. I was considering using the Stella, but she's just way too big compared to everyone else. Here are all of my silvers. Mad respect to this prop as well. This is the very first silver that I made. All the way from Season 1. And this is the second paper silver that I made. She was very short-lived. I made her just for the tutorial. I'm sorry, Silver. Sad Silver noises. Don't worry, I took your spot. That doesn't make me feel any better. And here are my spare hatchlings. The eggs. I can't believe how much the eggs have changed since season one. And to round off all the bird extras, here are my extra rusties. Rusties! Yeah, I see what I did there. They were mostly made by my good friend Blue J Flags Disseminate. He made me two plushes, he made me a legendary Cubicraft of Rusty, and he also gave me a clay model. The guy just fell apart on its own because he got really old. For the life of me, I couldn't glue all of his fallen parts together because they're really heavy. And here's the Cubicraft that I made of myself. Here are my spare foreign pigs. One of them is Dr. Pig, and another is one of the wizard pigs from Angry Birds Epic. There's another one that has the mustache in my mustache. Here are my El Parcador side by side. Ay ay ay! Get in this! This is my old Prince Porky and my old Chef Pig. I still remember this duo from Angry Birds Epic. Here's my old and new Hansa Pig side by side. They can both do this, because it's funny. <laughs> my hair! My beautiful hair! The last of my extras is this Angry Birds Go Chuck. So, backstory behind this thing my little cousin gave me this thing because it didn't have an Angry Birds Go Chuck telepod. So this guy was the stand-in until this guy came in. Oh yeah, here's an old Angry Birds candle that I had. It's a cool novelty to keep. Another novelty is this Angry Birds kaleidoscope that I had lying around. And this is what it looks like. This is really trippy. I'm surprised I didn't use this for a video yet. So yeah, this is my updated Angry Birds collection video. No boy, I added a lot of stuff this time around. By the way, I couldn't include the plants that birds use because they're technically plants versus zombies, not Angry Birds, so... Don't look at me like that, Walnut! I'll most likely be making another one when the Tale of Two Islands story arc for Angry Birds Fantastic Adventures finishes because there are more Hungry Birds that I want to add as well as more characters that I want to add. So that is all from me. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, peoples.